So here we have the Dalai Lama, the, the spiritual leader of Buddhism, you know, that you know, religion or whatever the hell it is that so many celebrities, actors, Hollywood people, uh, which have like a, a spiritual connection with a galaxy universe and, you know, whatever, Gaia, <laughs> whatever the hell it is, uh, but always more open-minded than us closed-minded Westerners with our uh, Judeo-Christian traditions. Um, which we've been told for so long, so many times, that we're bad, we're decadent, Europe, America, Latin America with our traditional Christian families and Catholic values, we're all bad, terrible people. This is the way to go, right? Well, take a look at what this actually is. This is not some exception, this is not some, uh, you know, one person of the institution doing something bad. This is the leader of this institution doing this openly in front of other people. So you can imagine what goes behind closed doors. <laughs> then I think finally here also. <laughs> <laughs> He's been filmed. <laughs> and suck my tongue. <laughs> and suck my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> right um, it, it's not all the same we're not all the same people we are individuals in spite of what communism socialism and Soviet communism may be teaching you or Chinese communism or this shit we are, we're all different we're not all the same I'm not the same as this person you're not the same as that guy there or that person over there and these differences matter what you aim for as an individual what you aim for what you strive what you want to become uh, as a society as a culture matters so when you have your spiritual leader or your cultural leader even right even if you don't believe in anything much spiritual what is it that you want to have as normal behavior in your society do you want to have a spiritual leader that openly does this to little children or would you want to have someone that says no this is wrong you don't do this to little kids we are living in very weird times the government of the United States just you know hours ago announced an open hotline so as to help out people that have gender dysphoria so as to reinforce their gender dysphoria not to help them not to give them psychological assistance and try to bring them back to reality. No, no, no. We're going to be encouraging them to being more violent towards people that are normal, that are healthy, that are in good psychological condition. No, we're going to be convincing them that their twisted you know, mind is, is healthy and they should go for more of that. They should be um, revalidated and encouraged to go on with that. Because that's good. No, it's not. When, when someone is, is sick, you don't keep encouraging that sickness. You don't make it worse. If someone is morbidly obese, you don't go and tell that person, yeah, you need to gain 100 pounds, man. You're just too thin. No one good does that. You tell that person, no, you have a problem. You're just eating yourself to death. You're doing something for whatever reason, right? You're, you're trying to fill, fill, fill up a, a void on the inside for whatever traumatic, horrible thing happened to you or anxiety, whatever it is. But what you're doing right now is not good for you. So when you have a person like this, in the values that I grew up with, the values that you probably share as well, this is the kind of thing that puts someone in prison. Where I come from in Latin America, when someone, if a neighbor is caught doing this to a little kid, you probably put that guy's head on the curb and use a sledgehammer on it. That's kind of the thing that you would expect in places, certain parts of Latin America where the trust on the you know, uh, law enforcement has, has been lost a little bit. But um, 
in other cultures, in other parts of the world, whenever you see people that have a completely deranged idea of what healthy, normal behavior is, try to explain you, oh, but you don't know that when, when you look into Buddhism, there's infinite genders. Well, yeah, I'm not surprised. I don't care. I don't care what the hell they do in India or uh, this guy does in the privacy of his room and apparently now doing in the eye of the public without a care in the world. I, I, I don't care what he does, right? I would hope that there's laws in place that stop something from like this from happening. Probably in other parts of the world, this is perfectly normal. Just like in certain parts of the world, it's perfectly normal culturally to go and sell your you know, five-year-old daughter. Because, I mean, she's a woman. She's useless. What the hell do I want a little girl for? As a father, as a mother, I just sell that little child to a pervert old man. And he's going to be you know, making good use of her. And I make a couple hundred bucks. I mean, that is culturally accepted in some parts of the world. In other parts of the world, we end that very quickly. And it used to be that we had laws protecting little children from this sort of stuff. And all of that is quickly changing at an accelerated rate because it's being normalized. And it's being normalized in the West where that was not the case. Until just a few years ago, this was the kind of thing that got you in a lot of problems, a lot of uh, complications if you did something like this to children. But we're in very fucked up, messed up times, and this is becoming more and more normal. So whenever anyone, especially someone that has uh, a very serious psychological disorder, tries to tell you that, oh, but in India they do this, or Buddhism says that, well, I don't give a flying fuck. I write it down in my big book of things I don't give a fuck about, and you shouldn't either, okay? See you in the next video, guys. Take care.